It's a beautiful autumn day. Let's take a look around the garden. I'm excited to share with you the progress that I made in this section of our garden this week. Do you remember last Friday I showed you the brassicas growing in this bed, which I'll now call bed one. And then in bed two, I planted out this section full of some beautiful pollinator flowers like the alyssum, some annual flowers, and then a big patch of peas. Well, I actually got a third bed finished a few days ago, which I will call bed three. I was originally planning on planting it up with onions. However, as you can see there, this whole bed isn't full of onions, only the back section. So I put in some red and brown onions in here. You can hardly see them there, so teeny tiny, little tiny little strands of hair almost. But there is approximately, I'd say about 50 plants in this section. I do have quite a lot of the onion seedlings left. I have to give them a water. My goodness, look at them. Um, now the reason why I didn't put all of them in to that one long bed was because I was a bit nervous to be honest with you. I have tried to grow onions for a few years now and I've never really had great success. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna grow onions in two areas in my garden. So I'm almost like spreading out the look. And then what I ended up doing in the front half of the bed was putting in a mix of pollinator flowers and edible crops. There's eight of these Icelandic poppy plants. In front of them, I have some purple mizuna, which is looking a tiny little bit limp there. So I may need to give it another quick water. I think there's about five or six plants. In front of them, I have these, which are kohlrabi. And then over here, got a whole load. Actually, I think they've grown a bit already, have they? They seemed a lot smaller when I put them in a few days ago. Maybe I'm just imagining it. These are beetroot. And then at the front of the bed, I put in those beautiful, colorful pansies, which I purchased from my local garden center a week or two ago. Back to the brassica bed. Thank you so much for all of your comments last week. I have decided that I will end up covering them. I just don't have all the bits and pieces necessary to make my little hoop house at the moment, but I will show you what I did purchase. I picked up this netting, which will stop those pesky little white cabbage butterflies getting in and laying eggs on the foliage. I was hoping to get actually some frost um, cover, but my local hardware store didn't have any and I really need to get these protected. So I decided just to start off with this netting. For the moment, it is a premium one, so I'm hoping when I do eventually take it off and put the frost netting up on here, I'll be able to reuse it somewhere else. Then I also picked up some of this, which is called conjugate. Hope I'm calling that right. Um, it's the piping that they use to tread wires through it when you're building a house or just doing any kind of work like that, electrical work. You can see there it's hollow in the center. I'm thinking with this, I'll need to cut it up into shorter pieces. And then what I'm gonna do is, I don't have them yet, but I need to buy some kind of stakes. I'm thinking like eight of them so that I can make four hoops along this bed here. And what I'm gonna do then is just put the netting over the top and you know hold it in place with some bricks and hopefully that will work out. But I just haven't got around to doing it yet. This will probably be a project to do over the weekend. And I'll be able to show it to you next Friday. I did also manage to fix up the back of these two beds. So I have another couple of large spaces there that I could be able to plant out. And I do have heaps of seedlings that need to go into the ground. However, I'm a little bit concerned about this area because I'm not sure if I put this paper on thick enough. There are a lot of weeds lying beneath that I've just flattened. And I'm just hoping that this paper will, you know, block out all the sun from them and kill them off and last long enough for everything under there to die off. Um, I may end up actually coming in and putting some cardboard over this and then popping some more compost over that too. Because as you can see here, I haven't really put on a very 
very thick layer it's quite shallow so I do need to work a bit more in these two beds cover them with some sugar cane mulch before I even consider putting any plants in I also want to get the area at the back of all these beds cleared out and make one really long bed there's approximately 50 centimeters or so between the end of these beds and the fence although you can't really see the fence at the moment because it's absolutely covered in weeds particularly these which are the passion fruit suckers they're all over the place and they're just awful to try and remove permanently they keep on coming back every year now the thing is when I do clear off all the weeds from this fence I need to be really careful because last year when I tried to do it I got an awful fright there was a hornet's nest in there and a few of them came out to attack me so I may come in with a maybe a stick to start off with poke in there make sure there's nothing you know that I'm gonna be disturbing because I don't want to get stung um, yeah, and then once I get this whole long bed done, I'm going to put up that trellis and I've got a heap of sweet pea seedlings to pop in. They're all here waiting to be planted. Remember I got them started in these toilet roll holders? Let's see how the root system's looking, if any of the roots are coming out the bottom. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful, healthy plants ready to be put in the ground. Now, interestingly, I got really great germination here on the back. These are your more common sweet peas called mammoth mix. But then with the more of the specialty type of peas, I didn't get really great germination on them, which is a little bit disappointing, but that's all right. Remember, I'm trying this one out for the first time. Um, I don't have any spare seeds, so I guess I will just have one, two, three, four seedlings for this year if they grow up to maturity. And then this one wasn't too bad. I did miss out on a few seedlings here and there. It's the variety called High Scent, which is a really beautiful color, very aromatic as well. And then for some reason, maybe because the seeds were old, um, yeah, I know they look very dry at the moment, but I have been keeping the water up to them. These ones, the mammoth melting snow peas, poor germination as well. And I don't believe I've got any spare seeds. So I don't have any climbing peas, any other ones. So I really need to um, sow a few more of these. I received this order in the mail during the week. It's some ranunculus. This particular variety, Primo, is one that I believe is grown by cuff flower growers because they perform really well. The blooms are all doubles, quite large on really nice strong stems. So you can see here, I'm just trying out a mixture of different colors, which I'm really excited about. We take a look at the actual corms themselves. They're quite large compared to the ones I'm used to purchasing. Now these are quite a bit more expensive than your regular variety ranunculus. Um, I'll put the price up on the screen. I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but I'm hoping that they will kind of grow and multiply over the years. I may even try and leave some in the ground. Yeah, it's exciting. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to use these in my cuff flower arrangements during springtime, because that's when they bloom and they'll just make my arrangements my bouquets a bit more of a standout hopefully and people will want to purchase them those onions i showed you a little bit earlier i'm thinking of putting them over here in this part of the garden this bed's probably suitable for the rest of them it does look quite messy over here at the moment and it will look that way for probably the next week or so as I make steps to cut back all of the dahlias. So this is what these stems are all in here. They're dahlia tubers underneath the ground. Now usually with my dahlias I leave them in there and I can overwinter them in the ground. However, I have put so many new tubers in this year they're taking up a lot of beds. And I think what I'm going to do is just dig the whole lot of them out. I will mostly use a shovel to remove them from the ground, but this one isn't too big. So I can't, can't wait to have a look and see how much it's grown. Oh yeah, this was only like one piece when I put it in and now it's multiplied. Lots of potential there to divide this up and make multiple plants next year. Speaking of dahlias, oh my goodness. 
some of the plants are really just putting on a beautiful show at the moment absolutely packed with blooms and the great thing about these flowers is that they hardly if at all have pest damage and I think that's because we're in autumn now there's less pests or even bugs in general in the garden um, so you can see there that the flowers are benefiting from this they are looking beautiful and I think they look pretty perfect. I've had a look through a few of them so far and I do not see any damaged petals. No little pests have been munching on these. If I get a chance a bit later today, I'm going to come out here with a bucket and harvest some of these beautiful dahlias as well as some other blooms that are on show at the moment. If I do that, I'll make sure to show you what I arrange next week or maybe even next week we could do one last big harvest of flowers before the frost really sets in. Anyway, for now, I need to head off. Thanks so much for watching till the end. I'll see you all again next Friday.